Mics are hot, we're on standby. Welcome once again to Channel 18. And uh, today we have our friends from the Conservation Trust, Michael, the director, to my immediate right, and Matt, the outreach coordinator, to my far right. <laughs> thanks, Paul. Way thanks for having us. There. Yeah, it's great to have you. Matt, Matt, yeah. Matt's actually been um, promoted to director of land stewardship. Yeah, so that's right. Some, I remember that last some, time. Mm, uh, yeah, this month it was recently. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that's great. Yeah, yeah it's terrific. Congratulations, thank Matt. you. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a good job. He is doing a great job. Yeah, very good. And uh, want to talk about winter talks? You want to talk about winter talks? Yeah. When are we going? Which one are we going to talk about? How about? Um, January 28th, uh, whale, oh, whale disentanglement. Whale disentanglement, the one that's coming up. Yeah, you'll see some interesting photos in a that second. That should um, be very interesting, you know. Yeah. I wonder how people get that close to a whale. Oh, <laughs> I know. We're going to find out. So, again, these winter talks, very popular here. Um, we're grateful to the Harwich Community Center for hosting. Um, these are at 2 p.m., suggested admission donation of $5 per person. And... Um, uh, see these photos coming up. These are taken by Peter Trull, humpbacks in action right off the Cape. Cape being one of the 10 best places in the world to watch whales. Is that right? Yeah. But, I hadn't heard that. Before. Yeah. Now, yeah. one of the risks that these whales face is entanglements in, say, uh, old fishing gear or other mm -hmm. um, apparatus that might be floating out there in the marine environment. And the Center for Coastal Studies will send out first responders, the sort of the first wave uh, team of their disentanglement division. They get to the site, they assess the, uh, si the situation, monitor the whale. Uh, if it's heavy seas or um, tough conditions, uh, which it especially can be this time of year, yes. uh, they might try and attach a satellite tag so that they can keep track of the whale's whereabouts until does the um, whale dive when he's entangled? I don't know. Depending on how um, mm. entangled they are, uh, how restricted their movement is, mm. uh, any number of scenarios could unfold. Yes. So then, um, you know, at least they'll know from the satellite tag in those situations where the whale's location uh, is until uh, further assistance arrives from the Center for Coastal Studies. So staff from the Whale Disentanglement Division will be here to share uh, stories of their disentanglement uh, adventures on the high seas. So it's going to be interesting. It should be very interesting. Yes. I mean, it should be a lot of good material. Yes, there. yes. Yeah, it's amazing. And then <laughs> um, February 4th, we'll be hosting uh, Norm Smith from uh, Mass Audubon, who's going to talk about uh, tracking snowy owls at Logan Airport. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> Matt's been uh, connected with Norm about that project. There was something in the news not too long ago about a snowy owl in, at, at Logan Airport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, there's a great picture. I mean, we all remember they came down a couple winters ago. There was many of them, West yes. Ends Beach. Um, the Blue Hills Sanctuary of Mass Audubon, yeah. Norman Smith has been a part of for decades, and they've been banding and tracking snowy owls, look at that one, at um, Logan Airport. So I'm sure we'll learn a lot about their migration patterns, how many come per year, um, a, lot of, a lot of good information. He's done the most in this area that I'm aware of mm -hmm. in terms of tracking these creatures. These photos that you just saw in this one here, um, taken by our volunteer photographer, Janet DiMattia. I mean, look at that stunning photo. That was taken at West Dennis Beach oh. when um, we had that, uh, what's called an er eruption uh, with an eye, um, that wave of snowy owls that came okay. down from the north a couple uh, winters ago, like mm -hmm. Matt referenced. Um, we even led some walks out there to get good looks at these uh, snowy owls, amazing. So uh, sometimes <coughs> they do come down during the winter um, and visit some of our uh, barrier beaches. Um, and occasionally folks can get a good look through some uh, binoculars or spotting scope. But yeah, we look forward to Norm's talk on February 4th and then February 11th, Saturday, yes. 2 p.m. again here at the Community Center, we're going to be talking about the life of the North American river otter, uh, which is really interesting. Um, look at that photo. These photos that you'll see provided by Liz Baldwin. Uh, she's a biologist with um, a company based on Martha's Vineyard called Biodiversity Works. 
And I uh, love that photo. Look at it popping up from the pond ice. <laughs> and um, these are secretive, elusive mammals. Uh, and some of the lands that folks have helped Harwich Conservation Trust preserve over the years host otters. We know because we've seen otter sign, um, otter uh, tracks, mm -hmm. otter slides when they uh, make their way across the snow. Um, on some of our conservation lands. So we thought, boy, wouldn't everybody like to learn a little bit more about the behavior and um, population distribution and some of the habits of these uh, very charismatic uh, river otters. So that'll be fun, February 11th. February 11th, mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, yeah. And how are there many of them around here? Well, we're going to learn a lot from Liz. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be fascinating. I've been. Now, you said that they, they were uh, almost house pets. No, no, I didn't say that. But, but they, uh, okay, they okay. I mean, they're very cute, <coughs> aren't they? Uh, but uh, they are wild animals. Uh, okay. But they're elusive and um, secretive creatures. You don't see them very often. Mm -hmm. um, you're lucky to catch a glimpse. Um, so it'll be fascinating to learn more about their life history and life cycle. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, February 11th. And then on um, Saturday, February 25th, again here, 2 p.m., we have um, a winter talk titled uh, Eco Restoration, Ecological Restoration, Transforming Retired Bogs Back to uh, yeah, natural, natural, uh, natural Wetland yeah. Habitats. <clears throat> And that's going to be a very interesting talk. Um, you'll see some photos uh, next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> a very popular local boy. That's right. You're yeah. exactly right. And that's yeah. a good segue into the photo that's on the screen right now. And that's a shot of the Trust's largest protected <coughs> land holding, the 66-acre Robert F. Smith Colebrook Preserve, <coughs> formerly known as the Bank Street Bogs. Those bogs um, were essentially... Um, out of production when the trust acquired them going on 16 years now and Is it that long? yeah believe it or not wow. and so we've been working slow and steady on enhancing wildlife habitat <coughs> and water flow and <coughs> visitor <coughs> experience there and you can <coughs> see one of the challenges right there with that image these are old dilapidated uh, <coughs> relics of the cranberry uh, culvert system to control uh, water flow of the main water course, Coal Brook, and um, they're degrading and falling in. And uh, that's sort of a sideways image, but you can get the sense of the culvert in the uh, on the left side of the screen. And what are you going to be doing? I mean, well, when you say you, 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 you're going restoring, to restoring, yeah, that? what's involved with that? Yeah. yeah. Well, is that water? Or? It's, a, it's a couple different steps, um, um, including uh, removing those culverts uh, completely, replacing those crossings with pedestrian bridges. That allows more daylight into the uh, Cold Brook itself, as well as a more natural flow, okay. uh, enhances mm -hmm. fish passage through Cold Brook. Um, we'll also be working on uh, removing some of the sand that's been layered on the wetland surface over the decades. Um, and uh, Matt and I have been involved in the ecological restoration planning process with the state's uh, Division of Ecological Restoration. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be kind of uh, spearheading this effort. Um, and this talk is really the beginning of PR, public outreach for this project. Um, so some of the other things, they'll be working to make more open water features in certain areas, um, which will restore natural hydrology. And um, it also is an opportunity for salt marsh migration. Mm. Salt marshes are being you know, degraded over time and with sea level rise, we need more areas where they can uh, eventually migrate to. So this is a great spot that's been uh, highlighted as a, um, a place where that can happen. Now, is this going to take several months or six months or so? Actually, we're in year five or six of the planning process, oh, but it's, wow. it's really um, uh, kicked into uh, higher gear more recently. Um, and so we're working on the uh, final uh, design phase now, um, and this talk on the 25th will talk about, um, will present some of our 
uh, understandings of the site and the direction we'd like to take ecological restoration. Then after that, later this year in 2017, we'll embark on the initial permitting phase mm -hmm. um, with Conservation Commission. Um, and then uh, after that, probably into early 2018, the plan at the moment is to start the actual restoration itself on the ground. Um, uh, using some of these techniques to restore wetland habitat that we've just described and we'll learn more about on February 25th. That sounds like a pretty extensive program. It's, it's going to be fascinating. Yes. Yeah, innovative, very innovative. Yeah. And then, of course, we've got the Live Owl program. Yes, that's coming, coming up, up on March 4th. Yeah, yeah Saturday <laughs> in the gymnasium here at the community center. But uh, we'll be hosting uh, Marsha and Mark Wilson. Uh, once again, there they are. Uh, Mark, mm -hmm. a retired Boston Globe professional photographer, <coughs> uh, Marsha, <coughs> there, um, a naturalist um, educator for decades. Um, there's Mark again, shown in action right here at the community center. He's got a, um, a screech owl in the mm -hmm. sort of orange reddish, fiery feather phase mm -hmm. there, uh, color phase, and on his left he's got a sawwet owl. And there's Marsha mm -hmm. with a couple owls. Uh, from South America, wow. spectacled owl, and she'll bring one of those up to seven different owl species, live owls they'll uh, bring to share with the audience. And uh, it's been a great program, hasn't it, Matt? It's always a big draw. Every year. I've, I've seen it many times, as I'm sure you have, but I always come away with something new. And um, we always have good crowds. There's always people interested of all ages. And... Um, it's really just a great way. I mean, when else, when can you see these creatures up close? That's right. mm -hmm. I've seen one from afar once in the woods, but um, they're very mysterious animals. So, And she, and right there, she'll bring a snowy owl, too. That's a nice picture of a snowy owl. So, um, you know, these mm -hmm. owls that they have are, are all mm -hmm. injured um, mm -hmm. from uh, one issue or another, many involved in um, collisions mm -hmm. with automobiles. So these are wild mm -hmm. owls many of them that have been injured, they can't be released back into the wild. So Marsh and Mark carry special uh, federal and state permits that allow them to care for these owls for their um, life spans and bring them around to various groups for these educational programs. And just to feed them, that must cost a little bit. Well, they talk about how they have freezers dedicated to storage of frozen mice. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> that they uh, will feed these owls on a regular basis. So it's fascinating. These two, uh, this duo, Marsh and Mark Wilson, are amazing presenters. They are just so engaging, um, just the right amount of humor, uh, so many fascinating uh, owl facts and experiences that they have both enjoyed and are eager to share with the audience which Matt said um, is often of um, all ages, sometimes three generations from the same family. It's recommended for ages five and up. Um, the cost we've kept the same ever since we started this 11 years ago, and that's $5 for ages five to 11, and ages 12 and up is $10 each. So uh, we try and keep it um, you know, uh, as affordable as possible that way. Now and, is there a, yeah. something to, about an owl at Logan Airport? Well, that will be the, sh the program different. That'll be a different program uh, about wild owls at Logan Airport on February 4th. Oh, that's uh, okay. But that's you're right. Owl. The, yeah, there's a, there's a, but that's not a live owl. That won't be on February 4th. The, um, the, the um, owls that will uh, be live in person will show up on March 4th. Okay. The details are at um, harwichconservationtrust.org, our website, or if folks would like a hard copy schedule, they can just give us a ring and we'll mail one out to them. But it's... It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a real great schedule of talks and presentations. Um, and, the, mm -hmm. and the OWL show on March 4th, people can choose from one of three times, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., or 3 p.m. Um, and um, it's, it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, it'll be great. Oh, you got a great program for February. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a lot to do. We do. We'll see you there. Yeah. Very good. And thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. you, Paul.